Welcome to the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. The My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is your local source for the latest news and information on fishing Cape Cod. Now, here's your host, Kevin Collins. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast here from MyFishingCapeCod.com. This is your host, Kevin Collins, back with you for our last July episode of the podcast for 2021. That's right. The lovely month of July on the Cape and Islands is coming to an end, and our first week of August is just around the corner next week. Can't believe it, but we're already into August. We've got a great show lined up for you today. It's going to be one of our longer form podcasts where we're going to have three experts join us and share some fishing information. We're going to be joined off the top of the show by MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins. We're next going to be joined by Phil Howarth of the Goose Hummock down in Orleans. And last but not least, Bruno Demir from Cape and Islands Mitsubishi, who's going to give us some reports on Nantucket Sound. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Sure, hope you enjoy it. And for those diehard weekly podcast listeners, if my voice sounds a little bit funky, no, I'm not sick. I don't really know what's going on. I just kind of woke up with a hoarse voice this morning, which is making it sound a, a little deeper, if you will. Probably from all the podcasting I've been doing lately, a little bit of taxation on the old voice. So bear with me throughout today's show if I squeak or crack a little bit. So with all that good stuff out of the way, let's dive right into today's show. Well, first up on today's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is our first guest, MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins, joining us via the phone. And Ryan, how are you on this beautiful Friday? I'm doing pretty well, Kevin. I'm actually walking the dog with Lauren over here in the BB Woods in Falmouth, which is just a beautiful conservation area, so... Pretty good day so far. Yeah, it seems like a really nice day out there with some decent conditions for folks looking to get out and enjoy the weather. And Ryan, today's going to be our usual kind of longer form podcast. We're going to have several guests join us throughout today's show. So I just wanted to tell people that we're, you know, continuing to mix in the mini podcasts that are, I'll say, Cape Cod regional specific throughout the Cape and the Islands. But we're also going to make this podcast immediately available to the public, and it's going to be one of our longer-form podcasts. Exactly. So a lot of our podcasts this year have been for supporting members of MyFishingCapeCon.com. But this one we're going to make immediately available to the general public. So if this is your first time listening in, I hope you enjoy it. And if you do enjoy it, then feel free to check us out over on MyFishingCapeCon.com and join as a member. So you can get access to all of our podcasts, as well as everything else that we do. And we're still running that special, Ryan, aren't we, where the, the first month of the trial membership is still $1? Are we still doing that? That's the way it's been since I started my Fishing Cape Cod a decade ago. So, yes, a dollar for your first month, nine ninety nine per month after that. And you can cancel any time with just one click. Now, I know you and I got a chance to catch up with each other on Wednesday. It had been a little bit of time since we caught up in person, and hopefully we're going to get a chance to do some tin boat fishing in Cape Cod Bay as the calendar turns to August this coming week. But I know you got a chance to get out with MFCC member Jeff Campbell on Tuesday, the day before you and I saw each other, and you got a lot of good underwater filming done. I did. We fished down at the Monomoy Shoals, which has crystal clear water and at times the fish will get congregated behind specific rips down there which makes for a really nice filming opportunity because the fish are more or less remaining stationary where i can drop a camera down on the bottom and capture some really cool footage of these fish in the rips waiting for bait to get washed over to them i also got some really cool drone footage of bass in about three four feet of water again holding in the current and feeding on what i think in hindsight which i know we'll talk about a little later peanut bunker Hmm. so got some really cool footage that day jeff campbell if you're listening i also fished same day with bob snip he's another member who was on board bob was actually part of a tv episode that filmed this past winter on nbc sports and I met their good friend Ralph as well. So great opportunity to fish with members. It's a 
great opportunity for me to get some really cool footage, which I'll be sharing this week on the website. 8 a.m., once the tide really started pushing, the fish just kind of showed up out of nowhere, and we had really good action with stripers and some bluefish up to 26 inches. A lot of fish, but not many big fish, which is the story of the summer as far as what I'm hearing. Of course, there are some fish being caught. Uh, keeping the location secret, but it seems like most of the fish I'm hearing about have been on the smaller side. And if you take a look at the commercial striped bass quota, you know, that really says it all. Not a heck of a lot of fish being brought in. So good action with small ones, but those bigger fish are being a little difficult, at least for me, to find so far this summer. And you mentioned peanut bunker. That's what seemed like, you know, a lot of these fish were feeding on. I'm starting to see some peanut bunker inside Cape Cod Bay, down toward the mouth, the east end of the Cape Cod Canal. Are you starting to hear of uh, more widespread reports of peanut bunker, Ryan? Well, that's good that you're seeing them up that way. I saw them this past week down off of Harwich, so pretty much the exact opposite end of the Cape from where you've been seeing them. And then the ones that I saw were pretty small, like one to two inches. Same. So if you're... Casting towards fish, if you, if you see birds, if you see fish breaking, but you're not getting bites, they can be very finicky when they're on this really tiny peanut bunker. So something like a really small cast master or a really small crippled herring would probably get the job done. But those fish, as the peanut bunker gets bigger, as the season moves on, the fish will get more easier to catch. But right now they can be a little when they're on such small bait. Well, that's cool that you're seeing them up that way, Kevin. I haven't really heard much about that. I've, I've heard they were in Nantucket Town. Again, I saw a peanut bunker in Nantucket Town, but it's good you're seeing them up in the bay, too. Now, switching gears to a little bit larger species, we're going to go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Pretty much the smallest little fish that you could ever imagine are these tiny little peanut bunker that are you know, juvenile in size and hopefully will grow into a little bit larger bunker, which will make the striped bass a little bit easier to target as you just mentioned but i know you're getting out tomorrow are you going out with cullen uh to film some great whites or who are you going out with tomorrow josh garvey reached out to me about filming a great white shark trip that he's going to be doing tomorrow great as for his daughter's birthday present so they a great white shark tour scheduled with captain cullen and we're going to be departing tomorrow weather permitting and i'm actually going to be on a, a buddy boat so i'll be not on Cullen's boat, but I'll be on a different boat, just kind of following them along. And if things work out, I'm hoping to get some drone footage of great whites and just pretty pretty much capture the whole experience. So we'll see how that goes. I know they're saying it might be blowing a little bit out of the west, north, tomorrow. And you really want calm conditions when you're going to view the great whites. If the water's kicked up, then you're not going to have good viewing conditions. So we'll see what happens, but I'm very excited to have an opportunity again to hopefully film some great white sharks with the drone. So stay tuned. We'll see how that goes. And Ryan, I just wanted to mention the forum real quick as we wrap up our conversation. As you know, this podcast is going to be available to the general public and some folks that may not be initiated to the MFCC forum, but it's a great resource to check in with the forum for canal updates, you know, updates on striped bass inside Cape Cod Bay, Monomoy rip updates, etc. It's just a, a wealth of information for folks that may be uninitiated. Yes, so I haven't fished the canal this past week, but there are people inside the forum who have been posting updates almost on a daily basis about how things are going down there. And same for other areas around the Cape, and especially with tuna. There's a good thread going on in there about folks just sharing what they're seeing out there, tuna fishing. And then, of course, in the next few weeks here, the Albies are going to show up. And last year and the year before, we had some tremendous daily Albie updates being shared inside the forum. And the way we do it, it's not like you are got to get a bunch of secret honey holes by logging in there. But what you are got to get are just nice, reliable updates that give you good clues, good hints, about places to go and where the fish are. So that's pretty much how that works. So if you're looking for some more updates, definitely log into the forum. And thank you so much to all the members who have been 
generously sharing their reports and updates all season long. I really appreciate it. All right, Ryan, I'll let you continue your walk with Rosie and Lauren, and we'll let you go and hopefully catch up with you next week. Sounds good, Kevin. Thank you so much. Well, next up on today's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is our good friend Phil Howarth from down at the Goose Hummock Shop in beautiful Orleans, Massachusetts. And, Phil, how are you on this beautiful Friday? Absolutely beautiful Friday. Sun's out. It's kind of calm before the storm. It's going to be a bit crappy tomorrow. But a no, beautiful day, Kevin, beautiful day. And the fishing is fantastic right now. So let's dive right into the fishing, Phil. What are you hearing? Let's start with striped bass and bluefish. Okay. Bluefish, we've had the best run in years, which is great. Uh, Cape Cod Bay's full of them. So you've got a chance of getting them off the jetties. So places like the Stewart Jetty or Pamut Jetty, uh, Rock Harbour Jetty, you might get a chance of uh, getting bluefish from, from the shore, which is fantastic. On the boat scene, Billingsgate's are washed with them. So people, you know, people are catching blues. And it's a good size ones. Yeah, off Well Fleet in the path there, there's some really good sized fish. So, and, you know, and they're on the outer cape as well. People are catching them in the rips. People are catching them in you know, uh, Pleasant Bay. We've had a few out of Town Cove as well. So bluefish generally everywhere. And the striped bass scene, the um, you know, off monomoys fish really well, especially in the morning, first thing in the morning. So the early bird catches the fish. Cape Cod Bay, it's slowed down a bit because the water temperature is getting warm. Um, if you do get that, get deep, you know, with uh, you know, like wireline jigging um, or even the mojo and vertical digging, in, you know, jigging in the deeper water, in the kind of north side of Billingsgate, I was talking to Captain Brett on the hindsight, and you know he's getting plenty. Um, you just got to work a little bit harder and be in the deeper water for him right now. The, the sight fishing on the flats is drying up a little bit, which is a shame, but it kind of happens every year this time of year. Phil, I want to back up to the bluefish for just one second. I, I tease a lot of guys that own bait and tackle shops and say bluefish are a bait and tackle shop owner's best friend because they can really get into your gear, chew it up. You can lose a lot of gear fishing for bluefish. I know some of your customers, like you just mentioned, are targeting these big gator blues inside Cape Cod Bay. What are they using to catch these fish on? Good question. I mean, obviously, I'd like to say, yeah, use soft plastic. Yeah. Um, but that's good for business. And, you know, I do because sometimes they're the best way of catching it. But sure. obviously, every fish costs, costs you a, a, a retail your plastic. But so, what I do encourage my customers, especially for my customers that aren't overly experienced, because you got to remember, a gator bluefish can take your finger clean off if you put it in its mouth. Yep. So I like the longer lures with the tubes on. So things like the Hopkins, the Castmasters with a single hook on, because they have a long piece of plastic on, or the longer deadly dicks, because um, there's less chance of the bluefish actually biting above the law. Um, I do encourage people to fish fluorocarbon rather than wire. And what I'll do is I'll fish a 60-pound test fluorocarbon. And yes, I will lose lures, um, but I also, you know, it lessens the chances because they'll take some of the chafe off a of blue. But more importantly, if you fish wire, there's a very slim chance you'll catch a striped bass. Mm. Whereas if you fish fluoro, you still leave your options open for bass if they're around. But yeah, just just be sensible and you, you know use a fish grip um, or a um, and you know a set of pliers to de-hook it. Don't put your fingers anywhere near their mouth. Being English, I love the love the taste of them, Kevin. Yeah. Just, you got to. You got to gut them. You got to bleed. Well, you bleed them first. Then you got to gut them. Then you got to keep them on ice. And if you've got a Traeger, a green egg, or a smoker, they're absolutely glorious. Um, you just got to cook them right, but they are beautiful. Yeah, I know our good buddy Ryan, my cousin, he loves smoked bluefish. He's gotten into that big time, I think, since meeting you and picking up that tip. And I know his beautiful wife also makes a really mean bluefish pate. So I know it's really kind of coming yeah. around here on Cape Cod. That's right, yeah. Lauren and my wife, Jan, swap recipes on that. The, the smoked bluefish pate is absolutely stunning. And we eat it, yeah, we eat it all winter. It's great. And Phil, getting back to the stripers real quick, north of Billingsgate Shoal, I know you're you're talking to Captain Brett aboard the Hindsight, and when he's on the vertical jig, can you give us some pointers? I know there's a lot of folks that listen to the website that are predominantly shore fishermen, but that do get the opportunity to go out on a boat from time to time. 
probably not too familiar with the vertical jig and that deeper water for striped bass. So can you give us some tips on gear and technique at all? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the simple over jig because um, there's a lot of sand deals around this year, which again, there haven't been this year, which we'll come on to that in a minute on the tuna bite. But sand deals, the over jig is a simple diamond jig with a green tube on it. Uh, we redesigned it a few years ago and put a much better hook on it. So it's got a solid hook on it. Um, and it's just a, it's a technique is to bounce the jig as you're reeling um, all the way to the bottom and dance it basically. Yeah, just make the jig dance on the way up. Uh, Daddy Mac does a really good jig. Um, the, some of the Nomad Design streakers have done well as well. as a low-profile jig that really emulates a sand deal very well. So it's those smaller, lower-profile jigs that have done really well. No, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, Phil, was just are you hearing about anybody using live eels at night to get them inside Cape Cod Bay? Yeah, that, that hasn't been a big bite this year. There's plenty, yeah, live pogies has worked really well, especially on the outside. Down off of yeah, down off the outer Cape beaches. Um, live mackerel obviously has worked really well off the race, but yeah, we haven't sold tons of eels this year. Mm. Yeah, but it's a traditional and very deadly way of fishing at night for them. Uh, what's really worth mentioning to this report is the the outer beaches have just started to fish the last oh. week or so. My guys have been getting into them, and I love that. You know, being able to fish out on one of the outer Atlantic beaches. Um, for striped bass, and you know, it's been the big needle fish. Eels obviously will work. Um, needle fish and the big, you know, the big plugs, and you know, and, all, and also fishing subsurface with things like you know the the savage sand eel and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like screws my uh, screws my August really because I'm fishing for tuna in the morning and I'm fishing for uh, striped bass off the beach at night. So it's kind of end up with sleep deprivation by by September. And as you mentioned, we're headed into August. The last few days of July are this weekend. We're going to be in our first week of August next week. And you mentioned the sand deals, Phil. So I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about the offshore report, what's going on with the tuna. Yeah, the, the, the near shore bite for tuna is fantastic right now. Um, you know, Easter Chatham has been absolutely rampant. Um, you can see that the, the quota is almost full commercially, a lot of big fish around. Um, but, you know, east of Chatham the last couple of days, smaller fish have been bouncing on top. So the recreational fish have followed the sand eels up. The sand eels the last few years have stayed down off Rhode Island and, and New York, and that's kept the smaller fish south. So whilst we've had a brilliant big fish fishery, the small fishing has sucked. This year is going to be a big change. And, you know, I had uh, one, of my, one of my guys, you know, he had fish on a bar. A couple of days ago, Easter Chatham is just on Crab Ledge. Um, so the bar bite with sand eels is there. There's a lot of squid in the water still. So, you know, the, the smaller fish are, are coming this year. So the recreational anglers are going to have a great opportunity to catch small fish. And I also think that, you know, there's a better opportunity for a bar bite, which is really exhilarating, and also to, to run and gun and actually cast lures of these smaller fish. And have a real blast catching these, you know, 50, 60, 65 inch fish um, on spinning gear, which is, you know, really, really exhilarating stuff. I love it. And, you know, that's east of Chatham. South the Islands was really strong early. Um, it was at a place called the Claw. That bite's quietened down a bit. And it's more the traditional in the dump. And I'm even hearing on the southern end of the dump, dump people catching Wahoo now, mm. as that warmer water has actually pushed in. So you can actually get into the exotics. There's white marlin being caught um, south of uh, Martha's Vineyard as well. So you've got some opportunity to just get some you know, classic kind of canyon fish. Yep. Um, but actually catch them in, in relatively near shore. That the canyons has been absolutely phenomenal. I was, I was an oceanographer last week with a friend of mine on his boat. And we lost count of the yellowfin we caught. And the you know, biggest one was, you know, just on our website, I caught one about 1,800 pounds, which is a quite a stud yellow for up here and we found on our way in we found bluefin and we cast a bluefin and we had you know we brought 250 um, plus inch fish to the boat you know release one cat bomb so mm. we did great so you had some fresh uh fresh bluefin tuna meat oh yeah we were we were having bluefin yellowfin and every other fin this weekend you know so me and all my staff and quite a few of my customers ate well this weekend on the back of that trip so 
Uh, Rick and I were carving up. It took us three hours to to, to actually fillet it all up. And, uh, it's lovely to distribute. Yeah, it's, I think it's really nice. It's, it's part of the fun of catching it is being able to give it to your friends. Yeah. So we, we, we were doing that. And I'm also hearing, you know, there I am talking about exotics. I'm hearing reports of people catching triggerfish and triggerfish being caught in the lobster traps huh. off P-Town right now. So there's some really interesting water around. I know, you know, Captain Bobby Rice last year had a couple of mile in off Stellwagen. You know, I think this year we're going to see it again as the water continues to warm up in August. We're going to find ourselves getting more exotics, uh, which kind of really, yeah, it's going to be really hilarious watch, watching guys trolling for... Uh, bluefin on Stellwagen and seeing a marlin jump it's really cool I'm sure what it says for global warming but uh it's good for the fishing in that respect it sure is and phil the last thing i wanted to ask you about is just the store i'm sure you guys have been slammed throughout the the month of july anything special going on at the store yeah at the store, obviously we, yeah we're very busy which is great um a lot of people coming in i've got another big kayak delivery coming in next week so i'm gonna have boats again yeah there's been an ongoing shortage my exciting news that we just posted on the gram yesterday, I just had 130-something Van Stoel reel. And Van, you know, Van Stoel is a wonderful brand for the for the uh, shore fishermen, especially due to their you know, re- water-resistant capabilities. And, and Van Stoel has been like hen's teeth this year. Nobody's got any. So to get 100-plus of those in stock is, you know, encourage people to come down and have a look at the selection. But, yeah, we're well-stocked in both. Uh, we just had a big fly order in, so if anybody's fly tying... We just put in five and a half thousand items of fly fishing um, uh, tying equipment. So we got a lot of stuff going. Yeah, so ask you, yeah, please come on down, have a look. And of course, chasers, if you can't get in the store, go to themightyfish.com. Um, and we've got most of the store online now. And the, the other beautiful part about the Mighty Fish is free shipping, Phil, which is a huge deal on all orders over 75 bucks. So that's a great, uh, you know, perk to fishing online these days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you can't get you can't get in the store, you know, come online. And if you're not quite sure what you want to buy, and you're remote, please phone the store and speak to one of my experts. We'll happily talk you through it, and we can take an order over the phone, or you can then choose it from the Mighty Fish. So we're happily to do. You know, we're happy to you know talk and advise people as well, Kevin. All right, Phil. Thank you for taking the time to give us such a detailed report on this beautiful Friday and also just being a great resource for the Cape Cod fishing community in general. And I look forward to catching up with you again soon, hopefully. Yeah, and you. All right, all the best. Have a lovely weekend, Kevin. Well, next up on today's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast, we're going to take a trip around the world to check in with our good buddy Bruno Demir from Cape and Islands Mitsubishi. And Bruno is usually checking in either from the dealership or maybe the deck of his boat, the Gaviota, somewhere out in Nantucket Sound somewhere. But we have a very special appearance by Bruno today. He is coming to us live from his native Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey. And Bruno, how are you, and can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Hello, MFCC members. And uh, yes, I am on the other side of the world. It's pretty amazing what technology can do. It's brought us together for this podcast. You sound great. You sound like you're right next to me here in my little home studio set up. But how has the trip been, Bruno? You've been away for the better part of two weeks. Give us a, a quick recap, some of the highlights. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we we headed out here. We stopped in France. We, we checked out Paris and uh, went to the Louvre, saw the Mona Lisa in person. It, um Ended up going to Disneyland in in Paris. Um, then we ended up in the uh, the Riviera of Turkey on the Mediterranean, which uh, was fantastic. It's like thirty feet of water, crystal clear, and you can see to the bottom of it, and uh, you can swim in there with no problems. There's no sharks like in Cape Cod or uh, jellyfish that can sting you or anything that can hurt you. So. It's beautiful. We did some of that, and now we're here in the big city, 25 million strong in Istanbul, Turkey. And uh, we're getting ready to uh, board a flight tomorrow and head back to uh, home turf, the great United States. And Bruno, I know you've very plugged in while you've been away. You've been kind of enjoying the time with your family, but at the same time, you know, keeping tabs on what's going on back in the waters off Cape Cod. 
Give us a, a quick report on what you've been hearing in terms of stripers, blues. I know fluke is something you're looking forward to. Give us a, a taste of what you've been hearing from your guys back home. You know, it's uh, as as much as the vacation has been great, the, the guys are just uh, teasing me and torturing me with what's going on back home that I can't be a part of. But So I, I got some boots on the ground, and luckily I have a pretty good – uh, network of guys out on the Cape that always tell me what's going on. But uh, I can tell you right now, the fluke fishing is red hot down at the shoals in Nantucket. Uh, you don't even have to really go very far. Uh, you see some fluke right inside big round and little round shoal. Uh, so that's pretty good right now. Um, I know, uh, I know my cousin Eddie's gone uh, east. And uh, he's done pretty well with bottom fishing with haddock and cod. And uh, if you guys are out there fishing the sword for tuna fish, uh, I can tell you that uh, if you get skunked, drop down a big Viking jig with some teasers and bring some clams with you. Uh, Worst case scenario, you come back with some nice uh, haddock and cod fillets. Uh, I was talking to my friends down at the... uh, review bait and tackle and he was telling me that the majority of the bites for tuna they're seeing it on crab's ledge not so much out at uh the sword the sword has been kind of hit and miss and uh crab's ledge has been a little more consistent when it comes to bluefin and then uh i guess uh one of the most interesting reports that i got And there were multiple reports of halibut down in Nantucket. Hmm. Uh, And I'm going to guess that somewhere around the Shoal area. But I've heard of a 100-pound halibut and an 85-pound halibut uh, brought home um, off Nantucket. So that was very, very interesting for me to find out. And uh, the 85-pound halibut was actually caught on 20-pound test line, huh. which is normally what I would use for fluke. Mm. So that was extremely interesting, and I didn't see that one coming, but very nice to hear that that fishery might someday come back and we'll be able to target those guys. Yeah, I know you and I, Bruno, we talk a lot about eating. We, l- we love to prepare our catches in various different ways. Halibut. Great eating fish. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree 100%. One of my favorites. If you were out there, and you're going to be out there the first couple of weeks of August here, don't you have your uh, your group trip giveaway with Cousin Eddie coming up to go fluking soon? That's right. So as uh, soon as I get back on home turf, we we'll, we'll got a fluke trip heading down to uh, Nantucket for our giveaway winners. Uh, where we were able to raise $2,600 for Boston Children's Hospital. Again, thank you for everyone donating and and helping out with that. And that will be the first trip we make is down to Nantucket and try to see if we can land a uh, trophy fish for one of these guys. The fluking is good, but I had my first reports come in for uh, Bonito off of Nantucket and... uh, Martha's Vineyard. So the first reports of Bonito are, are coming in, and usually it, it, it goes with Bonito, then you start seeing your album. So uh, that's very exciting to me. That's one of my favorite fisheries next to uh, fluking. So I think right after that fluke trip, my next focus is going to be heading down to the Hooter and seeing if we can get some funny fish on the boat. And Bruno, are you still hearing from your sources that there are just a lot of sublegal striped bass around? It just seems like that's kind of uh, the vibe that I'm getting from most of my moles out there. There's some big fish swimming through the canal from time to time, but it's been really hard to target the larger fish. <clears throat> As the water heats up, it's always hard to get those bigger fish to stop biting unless you're you know, throwing live eels at them in the middle of the night. But I would say that your best shot if you're looking for a bigger striper, is most definitely going to be trying to getting, you know, trying to get down to the bottom. Um, try to try to, you know, just stick to the bottom and jigsaw off the bottom, and that's probably going to be 
your best bet to get a your striper. Um, other than that, from what I've heard, yeah, it's been sublegal striper and uh, bluefish. Well, that sounds like a, a pretty consistent report to to what I'm hearing. But I'm I'm really looking forward to getting you know the live reports from you when you get back home here safely with your beautiful family. I love checking in with you when you're out on the deck of your boat. And have those lobster traps been uh, soaking the whole time you've been away? Yeah, you know, you know, this time of the year you don't usually see some crazy northeastern or any crazy wind. So I just left them in. I didn't even bait them, but uh, as soon as I get back, I, I get a bunch of uh, stuff that I could stick in those uh, boxes and drop them back down, and let's see what we come up with. You know, typically going into August, it will slow down, and and I know that a lot of guys on the forums were trying out, you know, lobster fishing, and some of them were getting a lot of crabs, but, you know, going into August, that's kind of the typical thing, but it will get better as we start getting into the fall, but uh, it's worth just keeping them wet, keeping them baited, and, you know, even if you get one or two keepers, it's a nice little addition here. All right, Bruno, I'm going to let you go and enjoy the last day of your vacation, and I want to wish you and your family safe passage back here to the States, and can't wait to catch up with you next week when you're back at home. Tight lines, everybody. My thanks to Bruno Demir from Cape and Islands Mitsubishi for taking some time out of his family vacation and joining us from halfway around the world in Istanbul, Turkey. And that's going to put the wraps on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. I want to thank all of our guests that joined today's program, starting with MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins, Phil Howarth, the owner of the Goose Hummock down in Orleans, and last but not least, Bruno Demir from Cape and Islands Mitsubishi. Sure hope you enjoyed today's podcast, and for those listening for the very first time, welcome, and thank you for giving us a try. Sure hope to interact with you more on My Fishing Cape Cod as we go through the summer and fall fishing season. So thanks everybody for listening and bearing with me throughout my voice difficulties on today's show. And this is your host Kevin Collins signing off, and until we chat again, tight lines and take care. Thanks for tuning in to the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. For the latest local news, information, and fishing reports, be sure to log on to MyFishingCapeCod.com. From all of us at My Fishing Cape Cod, tight lines and take care.